Kubernetes is amazingly powerful, but if you're just getting started, it might also seem amazingly complicated. So let's learn how to debug applications running on Kubernetes. Hi, Kaslin. Thanks for coming by. I've been learning a lot about Kubernetes from you, you know, about pods and services, containers and more, and they mostly work pretty well. But what do I do when things aren't working? Oh, that's a great question. Learning how to debug Kubernetes is very useful, especially because applications on Kubernetes can grow so large. It can be very difficult to know what's going on in your system at any given time. Exactly. If I was just doing everything manually and only had a few instances, I'd know how and where to look for the information I need. But with Kubernetes abstracting away the infrastructure behind the application, I don't even know where to start. Well, let's start with what you do know. How do you currently debug Kubernetes? The kubectl command line tool is some useful tooling I've been using. I found them using kubectl dash dash help, but my favorites so far are kubectl explain, kubectl describe, kubectl logs, and kubectl git with a dash o flag. How do you use those? Well, I, I use kubectl explain whenever I come across a new API object that I don't know. What's especially nice about it is how I can dig into the documentation of specific fields too. So it's like a one-stop command line shop for defining objects. kubectl logs is useful because it lets me see what's happening inside of a pod. It logs events from containers and stores them so I can easily access them. Then I use the trusty kubectl describe to look at pod states and events. That's a great start. kubectl describe can tell you a lot. For instance, if a pod is pending, that could mean you have insufficient resources that prevent the pod from getting scheduled onto a node. So maybe in that case, I could delete another pod or create a new node to make space. Yeah, that might be a good way to handle it. Another state a pod can be in is the waiting state. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah, that happens when a pod has been scheduled onto a node, but it can't run. For instance, maybe the image can't be pulled. So even though there's space to run the app, it just won't work. Hmm. What about other cases, like if there's space to run the app and the image is working, but the app itself is broken? I'm not sure how to debug that. For cases like that, kubectl exec is your friend. Oh, let me look that up. kubectl exec lets me execute a command in a container or even open an interactive shell in the container. Wow, that's useful. So if you needed to dig around inside of your application, maybe to see where files are being stored or what ports are accessible inside the container, exec is a really useful tool for that. Mm, okay, so to summarize, depending on the state my pod is in, whether it's pending, waiting, or otherwise running, but somehow failing, that determines what my issue might be. Yes, and by using logs, the exec command, and other very simple commands, you can generally find out enough information to troubleshoot your application. Wow. Thanks again to Kazan for always dropping knowledge. In this episode, we learned a lot about debugging Kubernetes application. For more information, check out the links in the description below.